Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and to the continuation of the Hannah Lynn color along that we've been doing for Christmas in July. This is the completed page and all I need to do now is add a background and I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do as far as a background. So I went to Michael's a couple days ago. If you watch my shop with me video, you will see that I picked up these gelatos and my plan was to use them on the background in this page. And I've been wanting these for some time. I just never took the jump on it and purchased them because when I buy things, I wanna make sure that I'm actually going to use them and really enjoy them. So I picked up the, past, or the, yeah, the pastel set as well as the brights set. And I don't know, I'm looking at some of these colors. I need to kind of open them up. But when you open them up, they come with a couple tools. So they come with the gelatos, which are kind of like, I don't know, comparable to like a chapstick. And this is what they look like. But they are water soluble. So you can use them with water or not. You can also just rub them onto the background of your page with your finger, which is really fantastic. And while I'm working on this page, like just a little while ago, I finished the wings here. And if you look, you can see I've got a lot of stickles on there and I used white Posca on them to um, get rid of the black outline because I wanted them to kind of pop off the page and stand out behind whatever background I decided to do on this page. So I need to, here's the colors in this set. I need to pick the colors that I want to use, but these are the brights. And I'm thinking that these colors are probably going to stand out the most. And then let's open also the pastel set. And I would assume that these come with the same set of tools, a brush, and then these sort of sponges that are kind of, this one looks more like, this one's much rougher. And I would assume that you could get different effects with these. I'll have to read the packaging and see, but I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube and I've not seen anyone use any of these tools that have come with it. I saw one colorist on YouTube that had a set that you could purchase just specifically for the gelatos. That looked really cool, but a lot of the stuff that was in the set seems like stuff that is more like brushes that you could do spotting and like different things with these um, to create, you know, to use different techniques and create different effects on your page. But these are the pastels. And so these colors are much dimmer and I really, I got the pastel set because I wanted to be able to get the black and the white. And I figured that I could take that white and I could kind of blend it with any of these colors from the brights set because you can blend them together. So I figured that I could do that and kind of lighten up some of these colors if I wanted to that are in the brights set. So... We are going to see what we can come up with today as far as the background for this page. I have some ideas as to what I want to do with the background of this page, but it's more so after I get the background down, there are some other things that I would like to do to it. But I need to lay the background down first. So let's take a look at the colors I've chosen, and these are all from the pastel set because I found the ones that are in the bright set to be too bright for the look I'm trying to create. So first we have Kiwi. I have Peach. Oh, I think that's too close. Peach. And then Guava. It's kind of like a pretty orange. I've got two here. These, both of these are kind of different shades of orange. One has more yellow in it, it looks like. And then an actual yellow, which is called buttercream. And then I picked up my white. And I'll show you why I picked up my white. Because when I was experimenting on the other page, some of the colors weren't laying down right. And I found that if you lay the white 
in with it on top of it and try to blend it out it kind of gives it a better blend for some reason it did that and I don't know why I was just thinking pencils because I'm a pencil colorist so I wanted to just experiment with the white and see if it kind of did the same thing as like when you're using say Prismacolor pencils and you use the white to kind of blend everything together and it did kind of sort of lighten it up and change the look of it so I thought it was really cool the effect that came out of it so I figured I would try but the sets come with these blender brushes as you can see I've already used it in a few places because like I said I was testing these out before I just laid them on my page I've already spent so much time on and I'm still a little bit unsure of them because I don't know it's a medium I've not used yet they're water solu soluble but I am not going to be using any water on them because I tested that out on another page too and this paper literally cannot take the water even the slightest amount of water and it did nothing for the gelatos i also tried them like a lot of other colorists did or artists and just um put them on my fingers like this and then laid them out on the paper and that did not work either on this paper i will later try it again on another paper but what worked for me when i was experimenting is actually just laying them like a crayon or using them like a crayon and just putting them directly onto the paper and then coming in with the blending brush and blending them together. Now, I also found that when you're using the blending brush, the best way to do it is to go in a circular motion. So we are going to try that now and hopefully we don't mess up all of the time I've spent on this page. <laughs> okay, so I'm thinking the green was not really blending in as well as I wanted it to. So I'm thinking that I may just do green kind of on the outer corners, but all of the lighter colors blended together really nicely. So we are going to, they're just like a chapstick. And so you just turn this at the bottom and push them up. And then you just, or what I'm gonna do, there's many different ways you can use these. But what I'm gonna do is I am going to just lay them directly onto my page and I'm gonna come in with this darker of the two oranges or the one that has more uh, more red in it and I'm going to just lay it down directly on my page so I've got that one down now I'm going to come in with the next one and kind of blend it in there with the other And then I am going to come in with some yellow. And then after I do that, let me pull you in a little closer here. So then I'm going to come in with my blender and I am just going to do this in a circular motion. So see, this is the issue I was having with this paper is right here. I don't know if you could see that. I'll bring it in closer. But I just don't really like the way that it looks a little bit matted and the way that it's laying down. And I tried to come back with water, but that did not work for me because the paper just can't handle it. So then I came back in here and I just added a little white over that. And... It really just helps so there you go okay so I'm trying to think of where I want to lay these colors I brought in the green but I'm not sure about the green and where exactly I want to put it hmm I don't know if I'm gonna do the green yet so let's come over here and let's make this corner just like the other corner. So I'm coming in with the guava. I'm laying some of that down. And then the peach. Now I tried to stay as close to my color palette as I possibly could with this.
Okay, now you just come in with your blending tool and we just kind of go over that in this circular motion again. And see, the only thing I don't like about these is, I'm sure it's the paper, I'm sure it's not the product, but I don't like how the darker colors, or I've noticed if they have any amount of red in them, they have this sort of like pilling effect on them, and I really don't like that. So I am going to put a little bit more white over that one to try to get rid of that. And that does help quite a bit. But I have another idea for this page after I finish this part and just get a lot of this color laid down. But I will say that my favorite out of these colors is this yellow buttercream color. It's really pretty and vibrant. And the way it lays down on the paper, I just really love it. I'm trying to add a little bit more in here. And get as close as I can to the picture because I really kind of want full coverage and I want to come down in here with some yellow and then I'll blend that out I think I'm gonna bring some yellow over here Maybe a little bit more of my, what is this, the guava, the peach. And then I'm going to add, maybe I'll put a little bit of green right here and see how it does. If you notice or can see that, the green looks a little bit more chalky. That laid down nicely. I think it's, it's coming along fairly well. I'm going to use this yellow. See, now I'm getting a little more daring with a little more color and just laying it wherever I want. Oh man, here we go. Let's go ahead and blend this together in our circular motion. It's laying down much nicer now. I think that it's just you really have to just kind of get the hang of it. I think I want some green in here. And see, I'm kind of trying to keep the green away from the other colors because for some reason the green's not being very nice to me when I try to blend it in with the other colors. Okay, so maybe a little bit more of this one. Peach. Maybe I should just start blending them all together. A little more yellow. Oh yeah, they're laying down much nicer now. I think that I just actually got the hang of what I was doing. So let's go in here with I'm going to use the guava in here a little bit. And I'm not going to blend it into the colors, the other colors, too much. It 
See how that color lays down differently? I'm going to put a little white over it. And lighten it up. We don't want to put too much of this peach too close to her hair because she has too much of that color in her hair and I kind of want the background to stand out a little bit so I'm going to add a little bit of green in here. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. Okay, so let's come over here and continue on this side. And I'm just going to lay down some of whatever. I kind of like the look where they're just all kind of mixed together. the yellow dividing up these two sections where I've got this guava color because that's the one that doesn't lay down very well. I'm going to do a little bit of research and see I could find some information online if there is a way to make this darker color or the colors. I noticed it not just with this one, but any color that I tried to use when I was testing them out, they all had, they all laid down the same if they had any kind of red in them. All of the darker pinks and the brighter colors and everything. And I'm sure that it's probably just this paper. Let's put a little bit more green in here. So green really stands out. I really love it. Okay, so I'm going to continue laying this down and I am going to just speed it up and add some music in here so that y'all can see me complete this background at super speed. So we are going to do that now.
Okay, so here's the background after it has the gelatos on it, and I really do like the way that it turned out. I think that it's just kind of a little bit of a learning curve, learning how to, to, how to work with them, and I think part of it is the paper. Once you get into using other mediums in these books, then the paper will start to pill or it will tear or what have you. So I am back and it is the next day and I've had a little bit more time to kind of play with these and I have an idea of exactly what I want to do on this page now. So we are going to go ahead and finish this together. I am going to, I want these, the background to look a little bit more opaque and a little bit deeper and darker. So I've decided that I'm going to come over the lighter orange or what I was using, um, what is it, the guava. And I'm going to use a deeper orange on top of those. So as I go ahead and try to darken this up with my gelatos, I am going to speed this part of the video up so that we could do it together on camera and it goes by a little bit quicker. Let's get into that now.
here's my background and I have it looking the way that I want it to look so far but now I have another idea and I am going to try a little something new that I've never done before and so I want you all to understand that I know some of you are beginners and like I've never used these gelatos before but I experimented on another page before I put them on my actual coloring page. I learned how to work with them a little bit. I even after started applying them to this page, learned more and more. I learned once I was putting the second layer down that I was not applying enough. So I needed to be able to apply more so that I get a really good blend with the gelatos and that so they blend into each other even better and then I got a little more daring and I thought at first that um, the bright colors are going to be too bright and then I went back and when I applied my second layer I added in some brighter colors because I wanted to just give it a little bit of a, a pop in the background so I learned something. I learned how to new how to use another, a new art product that I never used before, and now I have a new fun art medium to play with, and I really enjoyed them. So now I'm going to bring in something else that I've never really played with before, and I am going to have a little bit of fun. Now I have some paint brushes that I picked up from Hobby Lobby and I am using a very thin paintbrush. You can see the tip is a little white because I've already experimented a little bit. Always, if you are using a new art medium, always experiment on another page before you bring it to the page that you've already spent so much time on. It's different if you are doing the background first, which I never do my backgrounds first. I always do my backgrounds last. But if you're doing the background first and you want to just experiment and it comes out really fantastic and then you want to go and go ahead and color the page, that's great, but I don't do that. And I still recommend anytime you're using a new art medium, you use it on something. Don't ruin a coloring page or don't ruin a piece of art that you have put a lot of time into. Oh, I have my brushes, I have a little cup of water, and I have some white acrylic paint. This is the Deco Art brand, and I believe I got this at Hobby Lobby, but it's the same price I believe on Amazon. I bought it in a full basics set so that I could have all of the colors. And then I wanted to get the set that had white in it because if you mix the acrylic colors together, then you can create other colors. And I wanted the white so that I could take any of the basic colors that I had and I could lighten them up and make them a more pastel-y color or add as much white and lighten them up as much as I wanted to and make a variation of colors. But I've got my little palette here. And I got these like a pack of four in the dollar at the Dollar Tree. And so they are really, really cheap. But I put my paint in there. And these little dots that are all over the page, I am going to come in and I want to basically whiten them and get rid of the outer line. So I'm going to do this all over the entire page and I'm going to do another speed coloring right now.
so I have all my little dots done and I still see a little bit of black in the backgrounds of some of them so I'm probably going to go back and fix some of that but there is something else that I do want to do to this page I think I have the thinnest brush that came in the pack that I purchased so I do want to say something about the brushes when you go to the store or you go on Amazon I'll link in the description all of the things that I used but there are better sets on Amazon than what I got I had to go through many sets and make sure that I was getting the brushes that I wanted but make sure you have a few different with a few different uh, brushes with the flatter tip and here I've got one with a little bit of a slanted tip to be able to get in the edges and the corners if I wanted to come in like really close to my my coloring piece and then if you wanted to do more of a background you've got your wider brush and then I wanted to make sure that I got the pointier brushes and one that was very very thin so that I can do things like what I'm going to show you now so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my white acrylic paint that I was using for all the dots and I am going to put some on my brush just on the tip like this and I am going to come back into some of these dots and I'm going to turn them into stars <laughs> so let's see how creative I could be doing this and I'm only going to pick some of them I'm not going to do all of them and I'm going to start up here in the corner and then I'm just gonna kind of pull this on all sides I think I did a pretty good job what do y'all think let me zoom you guys in a little bit more and we are gonna do a couple more of those I don't know how I think the acrylic paints already dried for the most part so I'm going to concentrate on just doing some in this corner again I am going to dip the paintbrush into the paint and just do the tip and I'm going to come in here to one of the ones that was already done and I'm going to put it in the center again to make it a little bit more opaque and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to pull that out trying to make the tip of it look a little bit pointier there we go oh, I think I like my first one better but it's art <laughs> so don't ever try to make any anything perfect because if it's art that you did it's going to be perfect Have you ever seen an artist that just made something where they just splattered a bunch of paper or a bunch of paint onto a page and made art out of it? It's perfect because they created it. So let's go on to another one. And I think, I don't know, is that too close? Let me try to do one right above her hand. I think that'll look really good. So again, I'm going to come in here. I think I need more paint. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go over that circle again. This one's still showing some of that outer part of it. And then try to you need to try to hold your paper kind of steady. 
and then I'm going to pull it out. like this. I might need more paint. We dab just a teeny tiny little bit here. And you need to always go out from the center when you're doing this. I think that that one's just not showing as much because it's so close to her hand, but that's okay. Let's try and do one more here. And let me rinse off my brush because I'm going to try to do one that is a little bit smaller than these bigger ones and I think I'm gonna do it well yeah let me do a little bit of a smaller one like right in here I think I should have got a um, a thinner brush would have probably worked better but when I bought all this stuff I really didn't have an idea in mind as to what I wanted to do but I knew that I wanted to do something that was very different that I had tried before so I'm gonna do this one here I'm gonna put the paint in the center Yeah, I really need a thinner brush for this. Let me turn my page. It's much easier for me to flick the paint out to get that um, the thinner edge on the star. Yeah, that's better. And let me grab a little bit more paint. Yeah, I like that. I'm doing this on top of my desk, and I'm just hoping that I don't make another mess. That's why I bought myself this little cutting board here, because, or cutting mat, because... I keep making messes on my desk. I think we need a few little stars over here, maybe in this area. And I'm gonna try to straighten out my brush a little bit more because, I don't know, I think I need to go to the store and get a thinner brush to do things like this. Okay, so again, I'm coming right in the center, and I'm just going to pull it out, and then pull it down, getting a little more paint. And then I'm going to turn it again like I did before. Oh, I love it. Okay, so you guys get the idea. And there are a couple more things that I still want to do to this page. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what they are, but I'm going to take a little break to charge my camera. And then I'm going to come back and we are going to finish this. Okay, so we finished everything that I wanted to finish with the white acrylic paint. And I got my stars in there and I put a few down here at the bottom and then I put one over here in the corner to balance it out so that the stars are kind of going like this and I'm going to add a little something more to just the stars but I also want to frame this here okay so I think that we are going to go ahead and do this border with the green stickles and I would imagine I haven't used this color yet but I would imagine that this color is pretty opaque 
and it goes right along with our color scheme. So we are going to do that just along the border on the edge. So let's go ahead and speed up the video and start the glitter process now. completed page. I absolutely love the way it turned out. I love the stars I did with the acrylic paint with especially with the um, stardust stickles over the top of them. I love the border. I love all the glitter and the bling 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 and it just looks so Christmassy and happy. Let me go ahead and just bring this a little bit closer so y'all can maybe see the glitter in it on camera. I don't know if you could see that, but the hot chocolate or the whipped cream on the hot cocoa literally glows gold. I absolutely love it. Hopefully y'all can see that on camera. And the glitter in my stars. She's got glitter on her eyes for her eyeshadow. But hopefully y'all can see that. If you are interested in any of the items you've seen me use on this page, I will have links to everything as well as my favorite things that I use for coloring down in the description below. If you would like to join my Facebook group, I will also have links in the description box below so that you could join the Facebook group. We will be doing another color along, so if you want to get in on that, make sure that you do join the Facebook group so you are ready when it is announced. So if you enjoyed my videos and you learned something, which I hope you did, Please make sure that you subscribe to my channel and don't just subscribe, make sure that you turn on the bell notification as well so that you get notified every time I post a video. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Happy coloring. Bye.